Hey everyone, my name is James and welcome back to Chippy Gaming. So as many of you know, the final update to Terraria, Terraria 1.4, will be heading to PCs in 21 days. So recently, to kill time, I've been going on a nostalgia trip by playing some of the older versions of Terraria and trying to get a deeper appreciation for just how much updates have evolved this simple game over the course of nine years. It all started with Terraria 1.0, and you may have already seen that video. Well, I'm coming back today to try and complete Terraria 1.1. At first, I did think about bringing my character from the original version, but I decided to get the full 1.1 experience I would need to start at the very beginning. What you might not know is that at one point, Terraria 1.1 was said to be the final update for Terraria, which kind of mirrors 1.4. So make sure to stick around until the end because I actually want to give a review of this final version of Terraria and talk about some of the positives and some of the negatives that I found while playing it. Now, if you were fortunate enough to play Terraria 1.1 at launch, leave me a comment down below about what your favorite feature was with this update. I'll say mine real quick. It was probably the backgrounds. The backgrounds made the world of difference to Terraria. But with that out the way, Let's jump into Terraria 1.1. So my adventure began just like before by creating a brand new character and a brand new world. And I was instantly hit with that nostalgia when I saw how large these trees were. This is what I think of when I think of classic Terraria. These worlds where the trees wouldn't even fit on your screen. This is a 1.1 thing and I think they toned it down with 1.2 but it's so cool to see. So I actually wanted a speedier start this time, so I immediately got to working on a giant house factory for all of my NPCs. And what was funny here is that I grabbed a hammer so that I could start sloping some of the blocks on the roof. Turns out, I'm clueless. That came in 1.2. It's crazy to think that a feature that we now use all of the time was just not in the game at one point. So with a big tower of NPC houses, I wanted to get to work on exploring the world as soon as possible. So I headed out with a wooden bow, just like I did in the original version of Terraria, but I immediately noticed that all of the enemies were a lot tougher in this version of the game. And this is kind of how I remembered them. I did kind of think of them as a bit of a pushover in the last episode, but here it took maybe three, four times as many shots to kill the same types of enemies. So that was one thing that I noticed throughout my whole adventure. Everything was just a little bit harder. I then stumbled across my first surface chest, which was nice because I found it in the first couple of minutes. Makes a big difference from waiting about an hour and a half to find my first chest in 1.0. And I found myself a spear. Now, usually I probably wouldn't bother with a spear in Terraria 1.3 but I definitely got a big appreciation for spears in this update because I used them quite a lot throughout my adventure. I headed to the jungle to try and be cocky and see what was around, but unfortunately, these hornets took me out of the game. Yeah, makes sense. 100 health, nothing to really defend myself with. Yeah, this was asking for death. So I headed left this time to go and check out what the other side of the world has to offer, and it was immediately the corruption. Now, the corruption looks fairly similar to how it did in the previous video, but as you can see now, it has a background which looks gorgeous. That's one thing that I always remember about 1.1. And what's good is that all of the spikes on the floor, well, they don't do knockback anymore. So it made traversing through the biome a lot easier. And then I stumbled across my dungeon. Wow, look at this thing. It's such a difference from that big bright one in the previous update. And I knew what I had to do. I had to immediately go underground and try and find a water bolt. But knowing what I know now about the fact that the Dungeon Guardian can pop out at any moment, I wasn't able to go as low this time, so unfortunately, in this playthrough, didn't get the water bolt. So after heading back up, I decided to have a look at some of the open caverns that I could find on this side of the world, and the first one actually led me to my first golden chest in Terraria 1.1. Now, golden chests were actually added in a small update before 1.1, but here they actually appear inside of these little wooden structures, I'd completely forgot about these. Like, I remember them looking so different that they can come in a bunch of different sizes, which I actually quite like. This was one of the smaller ones that you could find. It didn't have a door. And inside, I found an insanely useful accessory, a warding cloud in a bottle. Yeah, that's right. You can now get prefixes on accessories and they make a big difference. 
and they pop up a lot more. So just after that, I did find one of those larger ones. This one looks great. Like I get so much nostalgia in here. It had two bookcases, which I did end up picking up because I knew I would eventually use it for some stuff in hard mode. And inside of this one, I got some Jester arrows. Now, usually that's not really a big deal, but I did use them later on. So I headed back to my jungle, feeling a little bit more confident because I'd got myself some gold and I'd made a golden bow. And that made things a lot easier, especially with the cloud and a bottle. And I found myself my first golden shrine. So this is what chests would look like in the jungle at this point in the game. However, you could also find them in a different variation, just like this, where they're just out in the open. And I found myself some more jester arrows. So what I also found in this chest was a couple of featherfall potions. Now, usually if this was 1.3, I probably would have left them. But I decided to use them here because I knew I had a cloud in a bottle. So if you combine featherfall with an extra jump, you can float around and kind of avoid a lot of stuff. So that's what I did for a good couple of minutes. I just jumped around the jungle trying to find as much as possible. But here I killed a piranha and I got myself a hook, which now means I have a cloud in a bottle and I can also make a grappling hook. And then I found another warding cloud in a bottle, like what are the chances? And a suspicious looking eye, which means that I can now do the Eye of Cthulhu. Unfortunately though, my time in the jungle did not last forever. And once again, I was taken out by one of these stingers, but that was all right. It gave me a good excuse to go back up to the surface and actually make that grappling hook. So the recipe was slightly different here. You needed a couple of chains and then you could make the grappling hook. And what was good about this version of Terraria is it had a hotkey so that you could just press E and grapple onto anything. So if I'd have got this in the original version, I would have had to do it manually. I then decided, you know what, we'll jump straight into the Eye of Cthulhu. Now this fight is pretty much the exact same as in the previous update, so I won't show the whole thing, but just know I took it out first time, 160 health. Yeah, nine years of Terraria, it makes this fight an absolute breeze. So I did what I would normally do in Terraria. I killed the Eye of Cthulhu and I upgraded to the Demon Bow and I got to work. I had a grapple hook now. I had a couple of bombs and I found myself a Corruption Chasm. Now I was speaking about this in the last episode, how there wasn't any of these in the original version of Terraria, but here you would go to them and you would find life crystals, you would find golden chests. So I got to work, I got myself a musket. And then the second thing I actually got was a ball of hurt. And then after that, I decided, you know what? I'll just go all the way. I've got my good bow. I've got my jester arrows. I've got a little bit more health. We may as well blow up a third one and try and take on the eater of worlds. So I did this pretty much how I would do it today, which is so strange because this version of Terraria is now so old. So I used the jester arrows and the bow to just try and whittle away as much as possible. I felt like it didn't break as much as it would have done in the most recent version of Terraria. But once you've got it to start breaking up, you know, it goes pretty quickly. So I just used up all of my jester arrows. And then once I'd used all of those, I moved over to some of the shuriken I had. And after a little while, I killed the Eater of Worlds. Now, a big priority for me this time was to make a full set of armor. So I started working on the armor piece by making the leggings. And then I made myself a nightmare pickaxe. This is going to be crucial because we'll eventually need Hellstone. I then decided to farm out the Eye of Cthulhu again to try and get myself a helmet. And then I needed some more scales. So I decided to do the Eater of Worlds once again. But this time I stuck to grenades and I used Shuriken. I love grenades so much and this was a really great excuse to use them. But when I headed back up to the surface, well, we had a goblin army. Now, this is really important in this version of the game because what you have to do is you have to kill the goblin army if you want to get yourself some rocket boots, much like you would do today. So I used my grenades and after a while, I took out the goblin army. This is so similar to what it's like in Terraria 1.3. It's almost unchanged. I think maybe a couple of sprites look different. Maybe. It's really hard to tell now. <laughs> But once that was defeated, I decided to work on my elevator. I now had a full set of shadow armor and a nightmare pickaxe. So it was going to be a big priority for me to go and get some hellstone to make the molten pickaxe. But on my way, I found the goblin tinkerer. 
He's so similar to what he is today, the Tom Nook of Terrarium, taking away all your money, but I wouldn't come back to him for a little while until I got a little bit more money. What I found good about this update is that mining obsidian was super easy, really easy to come by as well. Whereas in the last update, you may remember, yeah, I only got a couple of pieces for a good amount of water. I then found some Hermes boots, which now means I have absolutely everything I would ever need to get through pre-hard mode Terraria. So I stumbled across Hell, and this place looks a lot different to what it does in 1.3, but a lot more different to what it looks like in the original version of Terraria. Here, the Hellstone does turn into lava, just like it does today. So I really got to work on just grabbing a couple pieces of Hellstone and also making sure that I'd grabbed a Molten Furnace. I saw a lot of people got nostalgic about the Furnace Sprite. I really like it as well. I hope that maybe in 1.4 we could get some kind of variation for this. So I headed back up to the surface and I knew what I had to do. I wanted to go and do Skeletron. I knew that this version of the fight would pretty much be the same as the last one. However, I was actually slightly wrong. I don't know what it is about this version of Skeletron, maybe you guys can point it out, but it really felt like his arms and his hands were a lot more disjointed and floaty than they usually were. It felt like it didn't really follow any kind of logic. I mean, how do you put logic to Skeletron? But it really felt like the arm position and the wrist position would be completely snapped the way it moved. Do you guys notice this or is it just me? I can't tell if I've just played too much Terraria recently and I'm seeing small things. But after a little while, I took down Skeletron and it gave me access to the dungeon. Now in our previous video, this is where the video ended. However, we've got a lot more to do. So inside the dungeon, I managed to find a water bolt. Now I knew that this would be the weapon I wanted to use against the wall of flesh. The reason I picked the water bolt is for a few reasons. Number one, it's an easy fight. But number two, it really reminds me of the YouTuber Euromir. Euromir was the person who actually put me on to using the water bolt against the wall of flesh. And I'm pretty sure that was in version 1.1. So I wanted to do it in honor of him. And I found the one thing I was actually looking for in here, which was a cobalt shield. So in my dungeon, at the strangest of times, I found myself a placed angel statue. Now you may remember that in the original video, Angel statues were a bit of a meme. They didn't do anything in the original version of Terraria. And what was the weirdest thing is that when I got to this angel statue, my phone lit up and I had a text from Red, the original creator of Terraria, and he told me that angel statues were going to be clouds in a bottle. He loved the sprite so much he just left it in the game. So that solves that mystery. But after that, I headed back to the surface because I wanted to go use the Goblin Tinkerer. So I made my Spectre boots. This was the best boots that you could make at this point in the game. And I also made an Obsidian Shield so that traversing through Hell would be a little bit easier. This version of Terraria had buffs. So one thing I wanted to do was get some Obsidian Skin Potions. And then I went down to Hell to go mine some more Hellstone. What's funny is that this version of Terraria actually gives you a breath meter for when you're underwater in the lava. You don't have this in modern Terraria, but looking back on it, it does make perfect sense. Like obsidian skin gives you this skin where you won't burn in lava, but it doesn't mean you don't have to breathe. So I kind of agree with this version. I then did something you all know I hate to do because I found myself using water walking potions. But I made a hell bridge. Yeah, I haven't made one of these in so long. I didn't want to make it too long. So I pretty much did it for the span of all of the buildings in this update. Now in modern Terraria, the buildings are about one third of hell just in the center. I couldn't figure out if that was the case in this update. So if you do know that, please let me know. I then decided to head back to the dungeon because I found a couple shadow chests on the way and I wanted to check what was in them in 1.1. And I got myself the dark lance. Now, I had no appreciation for this before, but I definitely do now. It was a lot like the spear I got at the start, but just on steroids. I loved it. Also, another reason I actually went to the dungeon is because I needed a couple more golden keys. Now, I need these golden keys because floating islands required golden keys. That's a little strange, right? This is something that I thought was in the original updates before 1.1, but nah, it's in 1.1. So the very first thing I found was a Star Fury. And I remember thinking, wow, that's really strange that a Star Fury is locked to the progression of the dungeon because I wouldn't say the Star Fury is that amazing, 
but I completely forgot what it did in this update. But then after that, I found a bronze house. What was strange for me though, is that I never actually used this accessory because you don't have many accessory slots and they don't combine the same way they do in modern Terraria. I decided it would take up too much space, so I just left it in a chest. I then tested the Star Fury, and I remembered exactly why this was tied to the dungeon. Yeah, this was a mana weapon. I completely forgot that, and it looks awesome, and I actually ended up using it quite a bit. So since I had the Water Bolt, and I also had the Star Fury, I knew one thing I wanted to do was go and grab Jungle Armor. Now, Jungle Armor was a lot more expensive than it is today, requires a few more vines, but you also needed one of every gem found in Terraria. See, I thought that was in the previous update, but it wasn't. It was in 1.1, completely forgot about that. I then made an Ivy Whip so that my grapple hook was a little bit better. And with that, I felt confident to do the Wall of Flesh because I knew that my Water Bolt would get me through, and I knew that my Star Fury would be good for defeating the Hungary, so I kind of got to work. Now, preparation for this fight took a lot longer than it looks in all the footage, because what I had to do was go around the world collecting all of the fallen stars. Now, to get as many fallen stars as you need for the maximum amount of mana, it probably took me about an hour, maybe more. It's quite a long time, right? You need 10 for every mana crystal, and now in modern Terraria, you only need three. So I use my water bolt just as I usually would. And this thing was amazing. I love it. This is like my favorite way to do the wall of flesh. I think it always will be. And with that, it was over pretty quickly. I defeated the wall of flesh. So inside of my demonite box, what I actually got was a ranger's emblem. And this was perfect because I was actually going to be a ranger as we go into hard mode. So I did what most Terraria players would do at this point, and I headed to the Corruption to destroy some Demon Altars. Now, this is usually where you can tell when somebody started playing Terraria, and it's all right if you started later, but most people that played 1.1 at release, when you ask them their favorite hard mode ores, they'll say, oh, Cobalt, Mithril, and Adamantite, even though Titanium is actually really good, because in this version of the game, you only got Cobalt, Mithril, and Adamantite. Now, one thing I remembered about 1.1 that was very true, and we'll talk about this in a minute, is that ore doesn't spawn in all that much. So, one big priority for me was to destroy every demon altar in the world that I could find. I only left one of them. And even with that, I did not get a lot of ore at all. Now, this is where the gameplay is going to get cut up the most, because what I did after this was I spent a good couple of hours trying to mine all the adamantite that I could find, because I knew that if I was going to do any of the hard mode bosses, I would need a full set of adamantite. So I did what I would usually do. I'd started out with cobalt. And what's funny here is that you can see me kind of looking at this with confusion, this crafting menu. And it's because I thought, oh, I don't have enough cobalt because I can't make the pick. Nah, turns out you can only make drills in Terraria 1.1. I completely forgot that that was a thing. Like, I know that you can get drills and pickaxes now, but I forgot that there was only just drills and they only added in pickaxes because everyone was like, nah, I don't think I like drills. Now you've got the pickaxe and drill gang. What I found most strange about this point in the game is that I never really ran into too many enemies. And a big reason for that is because a lot of the enemies that you'd find today just weren't added to the game at this point. Alongside jungle, hard mode jungle did not exist in Terraria 1.1. That was a big feature of 1.2. So the jungle was a pretty tame place to go do some mining, but I usually kept to the top of hell. I found the most ore there. So then I needed to work on a set of wings. Now, there isn't much to choose from in Terraria 1.1. You either pick demon wings or you pick angel wings. So I made a big platform in the sky and started to farm out for wyverns. So what I was using to kill these is my mithril repeater, but then cursed arrows. I made so many cursed arrows because every single corruption enemy just seemed to drop cursed flames and these arrows were so good. So farming for wings took a lot longer than most people are used to. I remember when I made my first set of angel wings in Terraria 1.1, I was so excited, I actually made a video about it because they took so long to farm for. You basically needed 30 souls of light or night, which took a long time in 1.1. And then you also needed 25 souls of flight as opposed to 20, and you needed 10 feathers. So yeah, all in all, took about maybe half an hour to get these wings. 
but I was so proud. I will admit, I did feel a little bit like a traitor though. I would only ever make angel wings in Terraria 1.1, so this was the first time I'd ever made demon wings. But I will say, going with the red armor, yeah, it looks pretty good. So to talk really briefly about how I managed to get my souls because I needed to farm a lot of souls of light and a lot of souls of night to make the boss summons and then also everything else that I wanted to make. So with souls of light, I found a nice area in the world that was natural that had three lava pools around me and I just waited in tunnels until enemies killed themselves in the lava and dropped the souls of light. But with souls of night, I had to take a much different approach you can't exactly farm Souls of Night by using lava. So what I had to do was basically just embrace any enemy that I could find. But I really liked this because it gave me all of those cursed flames that I used to make the torches. Now you may notice that the resolution has changed. So I moved it to 1080p. There were no UI sliders in this version of Terraria. So as you can see, the menus are really small when you play like this. But I decided I was ready for Skeletron Prime. So I'm using an Adamantite Repeater and I'm using Cursed Arrows. Now this fight is fairly similar to what it's like today, I would say. I never really noticed any major change. Maybe the arms flail around a little bit more than what they would today. Like I feel like they go further out from the head than I would notice normally, maybe. Once again, it's kind of hard to say really. But then with that, Skeletron Prime was defeated. Now I got some Souls of Fright. There was not a lot of things you could do with Souls of Fright, so they just went in a chest. I then immediately moved on to the Twins. Now the Twins, my god, this fight was legitimately so much harder in this version of the game. And it all came down to the lasers. The lasers were so pinpoint accurate, it was mad. Like I really had trouble with this fight. At the very end of it, you can see I almost died about four times. Yeah, these lasers, really, really hard to dodge. I don't know if it's because I'm not used to using something without the Shield of Cthulhu, or maybe it's the movement speed that's different, because you got to remember, I'm only using Spectre Boots. I would probably be using Lightning Boots in Terraria 1.3. But yeah, eventually, I took it down, but this was so hard. I always remember this one being the hardest as well, and it definitely held up. Now, I got some Souls of Sight from this one, and this was pretty important because I knew that when I wanted to do the Destroyer, it's almost impossible to do if you want to use a repeater. You have to use something that pierces on this version of the Destroyer if you want to have a chance of actually killing it. You either stay so far away from it that you're out of the way and maybe you get lucky or you get something that pierces. So things move pretty quickly here. I used my Souls of Sight to make a magical harp. Now this was 1.1's upgrade to the Water Bolt and I absolutely love it. I used to craft this thing all the time back in the day, and I'm really glad to be using it now. It does work a little bit differently. I feel like the musical notes move a lot slower, and they don't go as far as they would in modern Terraria, but if you're ever going back to play 1.1, I definitely recommend getting one. Needed to do a little bit more mining to make sure that I had a mana helmet. Now the mana helmet on Adamantite is my absolute favorite. I love the feathered wings on the side of the helmet. I think they look so cool. Now by this point, you may be thinking, James, you didn't fight King Slime and you'd be right. I made a crown, which you can see on my character throughout my adventure. And I made that crown to fight King Slime. But the thing is, you needed so much slime that I didn't even have enough until I was late into hard mode. And as I was walking around on my final day, one just spawned in naturally, I'd completely forgot about it. So that's King Slime. He gives you some ninja pieces, which you can use as vanity. Very nice. And then it was time for the Destroyer. So yeah, this wasn't a very long fight at all. The Magical Harp tore into it, which I absolutely loved. I got into a really good loop where the Magical Harp was killing the probes fast enough so that I could replenish my mana almost instantly and also my health. One thing about the Destroyer is that you're meant to do it slower than you would some other bosses because you're meant to release some probes, kill those probes, and then go back and destroy more probes and it's meant to be a cycle. Nah, when you've got the Magical Heart, you just tear through it. I love this weapon so much. I love being a mage in Terraria. I really do. So what was my reward at the very end of it? You know, what endgame armor could I make? Well, the final armor that you could make is Hallowed Armor. 
But to make Hallowed Armor, you needed to have a full set of Cobalt, Mithril, and Adamantite, and then you needed every soul from every one of the mechanical bosses. And this just wasn't for me. I think I'll stick with Adamantite. I've always preferred the look of it. But yeah, with that, my adventure was done. So what was it like to replay Terraria 1.1 all of these years later? Well, I actually found it to be a bit of a mixed bag, which I still find surprising because I thought going into it, it would be the update I look back on the most fondly. I remember at the time, I was only 14 when this came out, this update was my entire world. Like, I loved every aspect about it. I loved the lighting, I loved the backgrounds, I liked having wings. I really enjoyed the mechanical versions of all the bosses. I thought the concept as a whole was just absolutely fantastic. It really got me excited about Terraria, but replaying it, my only real gripe that did ruin a good chunk of it was just hard mode mining, really. There just wasn't enough ore in the world, no matter how many demon altars I destroyed. And because we didn't have the benefit of 1.2 having all that extra hard mode content in regards to enemies, it felt like I spent a good couple of hours just kind of doing the same thing that I would have done in pre-hard mode. I really do feel like later versions of Terraria really smooth out that bump, but this update was all about that bump. So it's interesting looking back how I don't really enjoy that as much now, but at the time, I loved it a lot. 1.1 is undoubtedly the most important update in Terraria's history. It added in this second tier to the game, which is hard mode, that all the other updates just continue to add on. So without 1.1, I don't know where we'd be at with Terraria's history. Right, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. I put a lot of hours into this video, so if you could give it a big fat thumbs up, that would mean a lot if you enjoyed it. If you are new around here, it'd be a great time to click subscribe. I'm gonna make sure that you've got lots of content to keep you entertained until Terraria 1.4, and then once that update drops, I'll have a bunch of handy guides so that you get the best experience on your first playthrough of Terraria 1.4. Have a great day, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.